it just it, it taught me lessons really early in life that you wouldn't get any anywhere else. Welcome everyone to the Firing the Man podcast. On today's episode, we dive deep into the jobs that Ken and I have had that have helped shaped us into the businessmen we are today. And, you know, I've heard people say like, there's really no new business strategy. You're just kind of like rehashing strategies of the past. And yeah, upsells. I mean, it, it certainly exists in a different form, but it's, it's true to form, right? You're doing the same thing. And so that's really neat. That That's really neat. So my, my first job, very similar to you, was in agriculture. So uh, when I was 10 years old, my family moved out to a, a small acreage on the outside of town, and I had a corn patch. And the first year is fairly small. I mostly just sold to my neighbors. And it was maybe like 10 rows of corn. And But it was great. It, it was awesome. And the next year, it got a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. And it grew into a decent size enterprise uh, to where we were selling like a couple thousand dozen of corn every summer. Nice. And uh, and so, and it was in terms of like entrepreneurial ventures, this lit the flame that has stayed with me my entire life. I, I absolutely loved it. And, you know, we would, so kind of how a, a typical day would go is we'd go out and we'd pick corn and then we'd put it in these big coolers and we had a coffee can and it was on the honor system. So people would just come by, they'd put $3 in the can and take their dozen corn home. And, you know, around four or five, I would go down there and help people husk their corn. And it was great, it was great. My dad helped me out with it. And in terms of like some of the best memories I have with my dad, it's in that this corn patch. And so after being in this a couple years, we expanded into pumpkins and I, uh, you know, there was an article written, not to brag, but there's an article written about me called the Pumpkin Patch Kid in our local newspaper when I was in eighth grade. And that made me feel like the biggest businessman in town. It was, it was incredible. And it was something that I was really proud of and it was unique and, you know, it was different from what my friends were doing. And so, you know, one lesson I learned from this is, and I learned it very early in life, is there are more ways to earn an income other than a nine to five. And so, you know, a typical day in thinking back on this, you know, my dad was had a full time job, but he would wake up extra early with me. We'd go start picking corn at like 5 a.m. And from like 5 to 7 a.m., we'd pick corn. And then really my day was done for the most part. And I'd go to the pool or hang out and, you know, people would come throughout the day and put their money in this honor system jar. And I'd go down there throughout the day and kind of empty my jar just in case. And it was awesome. It, it was awesome. And so, you know, that very early on, I learned there's alternatives to the nine to five. You know, another one is when we got into pumpkins, uh, typically me and all my brothers would go out and pick pumpkins and put them on a trailer and pull the trailer up next to the roadside stand. And I remember one time I was down there in a lady pointed to a pumpkin that we hadn't picked and it was ugly it was like it wasn't a nice circle it was like oblong and it was just <laughs> ugly yeah and she said i'd like that pumpkin and uh and she said i'd like to go pick it and i i said well let's yeah go go for it and what we learned was that people like picking their own pumpkins from an input we it's we spent significantly less time not even picking the pumpkins we would let people go out and pick their own pumpkins and pay the same price for the experience. <laughs> and you see this with like Christmas trees where people will go and they'll cut down their own Christmas tree. That guy who's running that farm, the Christmas tree farm, that's a smart business decision. And so, you know, the lesson here is, uh, you know, thinking creatively can earn you more profit. And in this was a good example of that where we would let people pick, you know, join our labor force for free and, and pick their own pumpkins. And, and so, and the third lesson I learned from this is investing in technology has in tremendous benefits. So the first three years that we did this, I had a walk behind corn planter. And that would be where you kind of take like a fistful of seeds and fill up this little jar and you push it. You're planting one row at a time. And what would happen, and I, Maybe I'm a little OCD about it. I like straight lines. 
When I mow the lawn, I like my lines to be straight. And, and same thing with corn. And what would happen was I'd, I'd start to drift a little bit with this walk behind planter. I, I must have gotten this from my dad because my dad also likes very nice crisp lines. Hmm. And so, you know, after a couple years for my birthday, I got a four row corn planter and we pull that behind our tractor. So now instead of planting a fistful of seeds at a time, we were planting 50 pound bags. And nice. if you were to track our revenue, the year that we had the four row planter, we planted three or four times more corn. And that investment in technology, just being a, a pull behind planter, had a tremendous benefits. And so I this is looking back one of my favorite times in my life and just a, an incredible experience. And, and uh, with my two sons, uh, I've already been joking with my dad that I'm scouting a good spot to grow pumpkins because it just, it, it taught me lessons really early in life that you wouldn't get any anywhere else. And so, so anyway, yeah. that, that was my, my foray into the workforce and some of those lessons I'm, I'm still using today. Yeah, absolutely. I would say, I mean, there's a lot of lessons packed into that one and I would, and, and definitely, yeah, I can see that today, the, the way, you know, the way you're thinking about to adding technology and different machinery and stuff. And so that's really cool. And, and now, you know, connecting the dots of where that came from. So as well as, you know, it's, I think it's good to grow your own food and, and know where it's coming from. I'm sure customers. Awesome. So moving along my next one, the, the summer after uh, the peach stand sales were over because uh, those were very seasonal i uh got a job with someone told me hey this this company here needs uh laborers helpers and there's no you know you don't have to be there's no age requirement or anything and so i went to work for i'm not going to say the name of it but it was an asphalt company in the town that i grew up in and it was family owned and family ran um and so you know, my job was to basically do all the shit jobs that nobody else wanted to do, right? And so they hired me up. I came in. I was, you know, 15 strong, had tons of energy. I'm like, yeah, what? I, and I, I was very naive. I didn't know what I didn't know. And they're like, yeah, you know, pick up this uh, 20 pound tamper. And uh, and so we would do. That company did mostly uh, residential driveways and, and 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 garage. You know, residential driveways was kind of their sweet spot. They also did parking lots, and so those were kind of the things that that we would do. And so I had this like 15 pound tamper that I had to take and go in. And uh, when they do the asphalt on a driveway, you have to tamp it in, meaning tamping like um, just imagine a heavy plate attached to a like a broomstick, and you just you know, you just kind of punch it into the asphalt to like compact it down. And so over time it doesn't, you know, spread out. And so I did that. I cleaned up the tools, cleaned all the tools. Uh, like I said, all, all of the, all of the shit jobs. I don't know if, if you've never done asphalt, the way they do asphalt is it's extremely hot. And so it's pliable and so you can work with it. And so, you know, being close to the, and, and this was in the summer, right? And it's already, you know, 80, 90 degrees out. And so being next to that asphalt, that I, I just remember like, I don't want to, like, I don't want to do this for very long. This is fine. They were paying me cash too. At the time, it was probably like 10 bucks an hour, like probably double or triple what I was making selling the peaches. And so, but at the safety, there was no, <laughs> there was no safety policies. There was no, I mean, I, I literally came home every day, literally like asphalt stuck all over me and my hair. I was sunburnt, a uh, heat burnt, shoes were trashed i mean it was very dirty and it was just a really bad environment and so it made me think like you know the people that i work with there were some people in their you know 20s 30s i'm like i am not gonna you know this is a very very hard job and i don't want to do this and that was one of probably one of the top lessons that i that i took out of that another one was uh this was ran by, and this is something that sticks with me today. This was a family business. And so <laughs> I've got a story about it. The, the dad ran the business and he had two sons. And then there was a foreman and then a couple of laborers like me. And so every, you know, on the job, you know, normally in the mornings, uh, normally one of the brothers would be late and he'd show up to the job site and then the dad's yelling at him, where are you? You're worthless, you know, whatever. And so it always started out like that. And then throughout the day, there were certain jobs where the brothers would want, they would compete for like the grader where it grades out the gravel or the steamroller or doing nothing, whatever it was. And so there's always tension. We had one 
where uh, the, the one of the sons and the dad got into a fight, literally a shoving match, and the son walked off the job site. And so there, and, and he was the only one that knew how to run the grader. And so the dad's like, you know what? I don't need him. And so he hops on the grader and starts running it. And we were working on it. We were doing a driveway for, it was actually a friend of mine's house. He was on the baseball team that I played on. And um, he had a three car garage and they had the garage open. And the dad of the company, he ran the grader and he couldn't, he didn't know how to stop it. And so the grader ran through the garage and took out the divider in the garage and the whole roof of the house leveled in. And we heard, I was just sitting like, what just happened? And so at that, that point on, I'm like, family and business, I, I, I don't think it's a really good idea. I think you should rethink it or, or put some very really strong policies in place to like prevent that kind of stuff because it was not ran properly with processes and, and, and it was just, it didn't go well. Uh, something else, I, I, learned how to, I learned how to drive a truck with a trailer and a steamroller at, at 15. I, you know, again, I'm not gonna say the names of anything, but you know, there were times where it was actually the day that the son left, the dad said, hey, I need you to drive this truck back back to the thing and, and it had in here and I don't know how big that steamroller was but I had to load the steamroller onto the trailer and then drive that to the business and so it was kind of you know one of those things where it puts you in an uncomfortable situation but you just have to learn it and figure it out like said hey can you do that oh yeah I can do that let me figure it out and so and the other thing also that a couple of things one the equipment that they had was not maintained well and so what happened was uh after the fact I found out that the actual, the real break was broken on the grater. And so the son always tried to put it in, re and the son used forward and reverse to control it. The dad did not know that. The dad, the son told the dad, hey, the grater's break is broken. Can we fix it? And he's like, no, we don't have the money. And so that's why he would do that. And so a lot of the equipment that we worked with was, it, it wasn't maintained properly. And that's a liability to a company. And so that's really like, I'm always kind of like, well, there's little things you can do to maintain equipment, whether it's your laptop or whether it's a steamroller, you should be doing those maintenance to, to you know, decrease liability and exposure to the company. So a um, lot, of, lot of fun times. I, I did that job for about two months that summer, and uh, it taught me a, a lot of lessons where I know I did not want to do asphalt long term. Uh, so very cool. Very cool. That, it sounds like a, one of those jobs that builds character. Yeah. I've got a couple on this sheet that would not want to go through it again, but glad I did. Right. It's, it's good to know that you will not die if you're out in the sun all day long. Right. You may just feel like it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, well, well, very neat. So my next job started when I was 14 years old and uh, it was power washing pig barns. And so a little bit of background here. When you're 14 in Iowa, you can get a moped and you can drive that moped anywhere. And so that was when I, you know, could branch out from the corn patch and uh, and work somewhere else. And so, you know, a typical pig barn is going to be 340 feet long and it will hold about 4,400 pigs. So wow. big, very, very big building. That's a lot of bacon. It is, it is. And you know, these, they, the pigs would come in as piglets and then they'd leave around 250 or 300 pounds. And, you know, I have heard people say like, it is a good idea. It would be a good idea for everybody to spend a couple years in the military when they're 18. It'd help you mature. I would also say that I think everybody should spend some time on a farm because it is you know, talk about the backbone of America. It is, it is awesome. I mean, that's where all of our food comes from, right? Yeah. We, and you know, I, I see it a lot in my generation where I've heard the term factory farming thrown around. And I can tell you, I witnessed witness this firsthand. No one cares more about those pigs than the farmer. Like they, it is in their long-term best interest to put out the healthiest, best product possible. And so, and that kind of gets into uh, my job was, helping to create an environment that would foster a really healthy pig. So I would go in and I would power wash. And typically after, you know, the, the, all the pigs would leave, these barns were pretty dirty. And, uh, I had a, a big industrial power washer and I would clean the, the ceiling, all of the railings, the feeders, you know, one of my 
this is one of the things you do when you you tip the feeders up there'd be about 50 mice underneath and you try to <laughs> you try to get them with the power washer and uh and so and it would typically take four or five days to clean this from start to finish and uh you know a couple things that i i learned about this one was like understanding downstream implications in the farmer that i work for he told me you know your job's really important because disease is an issue and we need to give these pigs a really clean place to live and and so you know while it may not have seemed like a big deal to skip over a part or not clean the bottom of a feeder that could lead to a disease that may wipe out 4400 pigs and you know we see this a lot in our business where you know something can occur in step one that affects step 10. And uh, and so the farmer's really good about, you know, explaining like you're, it may not seem like it, but what you're doing here sets up, you know, step two, step three, step four, as we as we raise these healthy hogs. And so that was that was a really, really cool lesson. You know, the other thing that I, I learned during this was that I personally consume information really well through listening to it. So I had a Walkman and I'd go to the public library and I'd get book on tapes. And, you know, I've always kind of admired people that sit down and read a book in a day. I'm not that guy. I don't know if I have too much energy or whatever, I can't sit still, but I really, but I really like listening to things. And so while I was working, you know, I'd spend probably 10 hours over there power washing, no one was around. And I would listen to book on tapes and I could mow down an entire book in a day and learn something or listen to a cool story. And I remember, you remember the old uh, CD players, they'd skip really bad. Yeah. So I would take Ace Wrap and I would Ace Wrap it to my stomach <laughs> so it wouldn't skip. And, uh, but I, I mean, I probably listened to 50 books that summer and I just made me realize that, you know, you can get the same information in a different way and, it, and it's you know through audio and so i had headphones in con all day long 10 hours a day and uh listened to a lot of like the bob and tom show you remember that yeah and uh i don't know it was it was awesome and then the the last thing is the last lesson is and this is something that came from my grandpa but was really hammered home during this is it doesn't matter what you do for a living as long as you do it to the best of your ability. And that's something that you can hang your hat on and be proud of. And I remember I tried, I mean, when I was power washing, I tried to make these barns spotless. Like I tried my absolute best. And when I was done, because I had been working on my own, I wanted to show somebody. And so I'd call my dad and be like, come and look at this. I'd call like the farmer, like, hey, come and look at this. And I was very proud of, this barn that was, you know, as big as a football field that I cleaned <laughs> by myself. And and so it, it just, you know, some people may look at that and say like, it's not the most glamorous job, but I I found great pride in that. And, and so that's something that I have taken with me th throughout life is, you know, it, it may not be glamorous, but like if you're doing your best, you can hang your hat on it.